Hello everybody, Calamity here, still sick, but we're gonna make it through this guide, I promise. Today's video is gonna be all about our favorite Hydro Archon, Farina. She's finally out, and I know a bunch of content creators have already put out their guides, so mine's gonna be a little late. Sorry on that, I don't have access to a fancy uh, test server where people get to try her out early and build her early. Um, I'm just basically... I'm with all of you guys. I got, I got her day one and I had to build her as fast as I could. So in this video, I'm going to talk about her kit. It's not really complicated, but it has a lot going on. And then I'll talk about weapon recommendations, artifact setups, team setups. And of course, we're going to do a little bit of a combat showcase at the end. And at the very end of the video, I'll share my thoughts on Farina. We have a lot to go over, so let's get started. Farina is... A sub DPS, a healer, and a buffer all in one character. And we're gonna talk about how she actually accomplishes this when we talk about her talents. So let's start with her normal attack talents, uh, which is called the Soloist's uh, Solicitation. This is, for the most part, a normal, uh, normal attack talent. Uh, until you get into the charge attack stuff. Her charge attack isn't actually a charge attack. In fact, it's a stance swap. So if you're familiar with Fontaine characters at this point, then you know about the Uja and the Numia uh, mechanics and stuff like that by now, yes? And if you do, well then her charge attack switches her from Numia to Uja or Uja to Numia back and forth. She can swap as many times as you want and this will affect her elemental skill which we'll talk about in just a sec and then the second part about her charge attack is that when she does switch between her alignments uh you can see here that the, your normal attack will do a what's called a spirit breath thorn or a surging blade uh when you swap it does either the spirit breath thorn if you're Numia, and then we'll do the Surging Blade if you're Uja, and they both do Hydro Damage. But this isn't something I, would, I wouldn't really concern yourself with, because if you look at the skill attributes for this stuff, uh, right here, the Spear Breath slash Thorn, or Spear Breath Thorn slash Surging Blade Damage, that has to be one of the lowest skill multipliers uh, I have ever seen for a attack, or even any sort of any ability in this game basically uh and you might be saying well let's look at your talent level it's only level four uh you can go ahead and go to a character trial with farina and look at it at level eight i believe it's at and it's only like still 16 percent or something ridiculously low like that so basically what i'm trying to say is don't expect this thing to do any damage uh at all in its current form i guess it's a little bit of an extra thing to her kit but it again it doesn't really do much and then here we can see the uh, multipliers for her normal attacks here. Again, this isn't something that you're going to invest in unless you have a C6 Farina, which, let's be honest, a lot of us will not have. Something else that I should note is that for, it states right here that Farina will always start in the Uja uh, alignment. And there is a way to tell if you watch the live stream or my reaction to the live stream. It was mentioned that her dress will actually change. Well, I can't really show it here, but hopefully I have gameplay showing you that her dress will actually change colors uh, when you switch her alignment. So you can tell she has a lighter dress when in Numia and then her dress is darker uh, on the end for Uja. That was quite a mouthful. And unfortunately, it does not end there because let's move on to her elemental skill, which is where the damage and the healing comes from. So, depending on whether or not Farina is in Uja or in Numia form, uh, her elemental skill will do two different things depending on her alignment. So, if she's in Uja, this is where she summons her three friends. Her three water buddies is what I'm going to call them because they all, all three of them have their own unique names, but it's easier just to say water buddies. And their damage is based off Farina's max HP. And they will also drain nearby uh, party members HP up until 50%. It won't go lower than half their HP. 
And when they consume your party member's HP, uh, it says right here they will gain 140 per up to 140% of their original damage. So yeah, she will be draining your party's HP as your water buddies attack enemies. Now this might seem kind of weird because it's like, hey, uh, why is she doing that? And that's, it's going to all make sense in the end, I promise. Now, let's talk about the other version of her skill, which is when you're in the Numia stance. If you're in Numia, she's going to summon what's called the Singer of Many Waters. And this is going to be somewhat similar to Kokomi's Jellyfish, if you are familiar. It's going to just heal uh, your party members. And if you're in co-op, it's going to heal everybody for a fixed amount constantly. It's not like the best healing in the world. It also doesn't do damage uh, simultaneously like the Jellyfish does. So... It's actually better to pair Farina with an actual uh, healer, like a real full-time healer character, uh, than to just rely on Farina to, to, do, to do the healing. Uh, she should always try to be in the Uzhif uh, alignment, and her water buddies should be helping you deal damage. And then you have your other healer help you out uh, to keep everyone topped off, basically. Anytime you use a charge attack while the skill is active, it will... And you also change your alignment, you will also change what's active on the field. So if you're in Numia and the healer or the singer or whatever you want to call it is on the field and then you do a charge attack, it'll turn into the three water buddies and vice versa. So if you do a charge attack with the three water buddies out, you get the healer. Uh, uh, makes sense, right? So if we look at the skill attributes, you can see everything here is scaling off her max HP. That includes even the initial bubble damage. Now, here's something I want to point out to you. This is incredibly broken. So I'm going to say this twice so that I know I've been talking a lot about her skills and stuff, but this is like really important. Her duration of her elemental skill is longer than the cooldown. I'm going to say that again. The duration of her skill is longer than the cooldown. What this means is that this skill should be up 100% of the time. It has a duration of 30 seconds. That's a very, very long time. And a cooldown of 20, which is which normally if this was any other character, I'd be like, well, that's really long. But because the duration is longer than the cooldown, this skill is literally endless. Now you might see a bunch of different skill multipliers here, and that is because it is showing you that each of her water buddies has a different uh, scaling multiplier here. Because each of them does do different uh, instances of, like, they do different instances of damage, they're not all the same. Some of them, as you can see, some of them hit way harder uh, than the other water buddies. And we can see that the healer is also here as well. And then it's also showing you how much HP they consume from your team. So they actually consume quite a lot because it's each, each water buddy is consuming a bit of HP every time they're attacking. So your HP is going to drain quite a lot in this state. So that's why I bring a team-wide healer with Farina is very, very recommended to keep everyone topped off, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. And having a shield does not bypass this HP consumption, even if you have like a Zhongli shield. They're going to chew right through that, and they're going to go straight for your HP bar, so keep that in mind. Whew! Now, that was a lot of talking about her skill, I know. Hopefully you're still with me, yes? Now let's move on to her elemental burst, which is thankfully a little bit easier to explain. Uh, it's called Let the People Rejoice. And Farina, this is where she becomes one of the best buffers in the game, hands down. She's straight up going to just do some AoE Hydro damage when you cast it, based off her max HP, of course. And she's going to enter what's called the Universal Revelry State. During this state, anytime characters lose or gain HP you're going to gain what's called fanfare. You gain one point of fanfare. 
Now, the more fanfare you have, basically, the more damage increase you get for everybody in your team. You'll also get increased healing, so any healers you got paired with Farina are going to get a nice healing boost as well. So let's take a look at the skill attributes here. So you can see there's that first initial damage uh, when you cast it. Lasts for 18 seconds. You have a maximum cap of fanfare at 300. And you can see that there's a ratio uh, increase at 0.19 per point of fanfare. So times... Right now, again, it's only at level 7. You might notice my skill and burst are at level 7. And if you want to know why, there is a new weekly boss once you complete the current Archon quest. And Farina needs the the, uh, the weekly boss's materials to get her talents past level 6. So, just a heads up. That's why I'm not level... These would be way higher if I had been able to pre-farm. But anyways, um, this also has a energy cost of 60, which is insanely cheap for what this burst does. Honestly, it should be 80, but, you know, I'm not going to complain. Um... So at level 7, you can see it's 0.19%. Uh, I believe at level 8 in the trial, it's like 0.21 or something like that. Uh, if you are able to get maximum fanfare, which you can, again, pair her with a team-wide healer, have her be an Uja, and you're ha constantly draining your HP and healing your HP, you know, back and forth, back and forth with your healer and her draining, you're going to get fanfare... I won't say you're going to constantly get 300 fanfare, but you'll get really close, and that's good enough. But let's do some quick math. At level 8, the ratio I want to say was like 0.21%. At maximum fanfare at 300, Farina is giving you like a 63% damage increase. And I would like to also point out that this is a straight up damage increase. It's not a specific thing. You know what I mean? It's not like just elemental damage just physical damage it's not just normal attack or charge attack or elemental skill damage or burst there it's everything everything in this game that does damage almost everything i should say uh is gonna get that damage increase i think the only thing that's not gonna be affected in this case is stuff like hyper bloom and burgeon because that's based off your elemental mastery but Someone can correct me. I believe Hyper Bloom stuff like that is not affected uh, by fanfare increase. But for anybody else, this is going to be an insane buff to them. And this is insanely good. So my talent recommendations when you're building Farina are both her elemental skill and her burst. Get those as high as you can because obviously so the Salon Solitaire is how she deals her damage. So getting this up is going to make those HP multipliers even higher than what you're seeing here. And then this is going to increase the ratio of your fanfare uh, when you cast your burst. So I believe at bur uh, crown levels, the maximum increase that Freyna will give is something like 75% at level 10. Insane. Insane amount of damage increase. And again, this is something you can manage to do with the right healer and the right setup for Farina. Now, let's move on to her passive talents. I know this, this video is already long enough and we're still on the talents. First up is Endless Waltz. Now, when you're pairing up Farina with a healer, which you should, when that healing overflows, Farina will also do additional healing based off 2% of their max HP uh, once every two seconds for the next four seconds. Basically what this means <clears throat> is that this is going to help you gain fanfare. That's what this talent is basically for. Because you might be reading that and saying, what's the point? Well, go back to her burst description. And again, anytime a character gains or decreases their HP, it's going to uh, give you fanfare. And this is basically just going to help you get even more fanfare. Uh, 300 is quite a lot and it can be a bit tricky to get max fanfare sometimes so this is going to help with that unheard confessions also pretty straightforward here this is basically going to make hp even more valuable for farina so every 1000 points of hp you get is going to increase your elemental skill damage as well as increase the healing of your singer oh it'll 
decrease the interval of healing with your Singer of Many Waters. Doesn't actually increase the healing, but just makes it more uh, frequent, which is also pretty nice. But again, the damage increase is what's important here. And then her last talent, which I'm happy to finally get to after all this time, is it's going to make your underwater exploration a lot easier and faster, or I should say her underwater combat. Uh, it's going to decrease your cooldown of any of the underwater powers you so choose by 30%, so you get to spam those abilities more often. Whew, that was a mouthful, wasn't it? Jeez. Finally on weapons, and as you can see, well, if you saw my polls, I... Uh... <laughs> I spoiled my uh, my Farina by getting her the best weapon I could, which is of course going to be her signature weapon, giving her a ton of crit damage as well as basically just increasing her elemental skill uh, and increasing her HP as well. Literally the perfect weapon for Farina. Now let's say you don't have access to this weapon or you don't plan to pull for it, what can I get her instead? You have a few options, and I mean that literally, just a few. If there are any Genshin Impact Boomers, your time has come. If you've decided to come back for Freyna, that is. The Festering Desire is one of the best weapons you can give her as a free-to-play option, quote-unquote. You know, free-to-play if you were playing way back when. Um, this sword provides a decent chunk of energy recharge, which Freyna does need. Uh, you do want to be casting that burst as much as, uh, or, you know, have good uptime on it. Uh, this is also going to increase your elemental skill damage by 32% and increase the crit rate by 12. Uh, yeah, that's perfect for Farina. That's what, exactly what we want is more skill damage and this is what it gives. So perfect weapon, uh, four star weapon for Farina. Unfortunately, it's very limited. I, I know it might suck hearing me recommend this, but I'm just kind of hoping that Hoyoverse in the future allows uh, newer players some way to get event limited weapons that we were able to get in the past because I do agree it's unfair to newer players to not have access to weapons like this. You're probably not going to want to like this news but or you might depending on your opinions on fishing. If you are looking for another free to play option that's actually doable for new players out there you're going to want to start fishing in Fontaine and you're going to want to pick this ferryman pipe sword uh which basically is a lesser version of the festering desire it increases your elemental skill crit rate by a bit and gives you some energy recharge instead of giving you uh elemental skill damage which is unfortunate but uh you know that, that's it is what it is as they say and then we have energy recharge as a subset as well so this will give your freedom plenty of energy recharge which is great because you don't have to focus on it so much when you're building her artifacts. Happy fishing. Now for those of you that are willing to spend a little bit more money uh, for your Farina, and let's be honest, she's worth it, right? Uh, the Wolf Fang is available on the Battle Pass, and this is going to be a solid weapon for Farina. It does have crit rate as a substat. And keep in mind, that's also Farina's Ascension stat. So Farina at level 90 gets around 24% crit rate. I'm not sure how much the Wolf Fang gives you at max, uh, you know, max level. Um, but just keep that in mind that you'll have a really good crit rate uh, amount just from your Ascension and this weapon alone. So you can go heavily focusing on your crit damage and other substats that you might need while you're building your Farina. Now, what are some other weapons that might be good for Farina, you know, outside of being it, playing back in 1.2 and, and other means? Well, if you are lucky enough to have a Primordial Jade Cutter, this is also a very strong weapon for Farina. Again though, I just want to point out that this also has Crit Rate as a substat, so this plus Farina's Ascension stat, you already have like 68% Crit Rate at this rate, so just... Keep that in mind, you don't want to invest too heavily in crit rate once you have this. If you're using these two, that is. Skyward Blade can also be an okay choice, I suppose. It's not the best thing in the world to give her, but I mean, it does give her a bunch of energy recharge. And well, again, she you'll definitely won't need to invest in it so heavily uh, on your artifacts. This is probably what you're going to want to hear. 
as a free-to-play player or a, a low spender but if you're wondering well is there any other like four star options I can recommend for you and the answer is mm, not really like the Blackcliff Longsword although it has a nice crit damage subset for her the I mean as long as you're just understanding that this is a stat stick and you should upgrade this in the future then yeah I guess you could give her the Blackcliff Longsword which is going to be okay uh, Freyna does not need a Sacrificial Sword, because as I stated before, her elemental skills duration is longer than its cooldown, so you don't need to actually reset the cooldown ever. You're fine with, without it. Favonia's Sword, she's not... I mean, I guess you could give it to her, but it's not really her thing. She's not a support. She's actually a... Sub, uh, she can be a very good sub DPS, so you'd be... Uh, you know, weakening her own damage uh, contribution by giving her a Favonius Sword. Loot is bad because she scales off like, you know, she's not, attack percentage is bad for Farina. She scales off HP percentage for her water buddies to do damage, so you don't really want that. And yeah, there isn't really too, too many other options that I can think of, but if there's if there's something I'm forgetting, please feel free to remind me in the comments. Next up, let's talk about artifacts for Farina, and I'm gonna keep this section as short as I can, just because of how long the rest of the video has been taking. And it's gonna be the Golden Troop. This is gonna be the best artifacts that you can give her. I've already gone over this a bajillion times, but I'll say it again: Farina does her damage from her elemental skill. So, the Golden Troop does exactly that. It boosts your elemental skill damage by up to a whopping 70% if you meet all of the requirements, which Farina can easily do. So, Golden Troop is the best thing to, to get for her. Now, early on, if you don't have access to this domain yet, or you're still farming the right pieces for her, then you can give her something like 2-piece 20% from Tenacity or Vorakasha's Glow and like a 2-piece Energy Recharge or 2 2-piece two HP percentage. Just some like generic stats like that is okay. Until you can get a 4-piece Golden Troop that is. Now for some stats, what are we looking for? Should be pretty straightforward since she is a DPS uh, character as well as a healer that scales off HP. We want crit rate, crit damage to increase her, her her own personal damage, of course. HP percentage is going to increase her both her damage and healing at the same time. And don't forget her other passive talent that further increases her damage. And then energy recharge is going to be really good. Again, you want a good chunk of it, depending on what weapon you gave her though. So if she's covered by... A weapon that gives a lot of energy recharge, well then you don't need so many. It only does cost 60, which is great. So you only need around 140 to 160 energy recharge. Now keep in mind, this requirement changes depending on what team you're using Farina on. Uh, you can also get some elemental mastery if you plan on using Farina in a sort of vaporized team. Um, or a bloom team or something like that, but... It has a lower priority over HP percentage for sure. Now, for the main stats of your Sands, Goblet, and Circlet, what are we looking for? For the Sands, HP percentage, of course. Now, I'm going to go ahead and point this out as well, but Energy Recharge can also be a viable main stat if you are having trouble getting some on your uh, substats, or you didn't give her an Energy Recharge related weapon, uh, or you don't have her C4. Uh, which I'm pretty sure a lot of you don't have, so yeah. If you are having trouble, energy recharge is okay. It also helps if she's the if she's like the only hydro character on your team, so she has trouble getting those extra particles for herself. Then you know, absolutely, energy recharge can be an okay choice here. For the goblet, HP percentage as well. You might be wondering why not hydro? Again, HP percentage is going to affect both her damage and her healing. And that passive talent, again, that I mentioned before, where you get basically extra damage just for having every 1,000 points of HP you have. So this is going to help out a lot um, more than a, than a Hydro Damage Bonus Goblet. Lastly, for the Circlet, your choice of crit rate, 
or crit damage, whichever one you're lacking. So I have her signature weapon, which already gives you 88% crit damage by itself. So I went with crit rate. It is a better balance, you know, just between her crit rate and her crit damage. So that's what I went with. Go with with, with uh, whichever you feel like you need more of. Whew, we are almost there, kind of. But let's talk about her constellations, which are absolutely broken. So if you are hardcore pulling into Farina's banner, you will be rewarded with it by one of the most broken constellations I've ever seen in a Genshin character. And they're pretty early on, so let's go over what they do. C1 will make Farina instantly gain 150 fanfare when you use her burst, and then it will increase the limit of her fanfare by 100. This is already an insanely stupid constellation for Farina. I already got done talking about how her burst is one of the best buffs in this game, and C1 out here literally making it a lot easier to get to maximum uh fanfare stacks as well as increasing that limit to 400 so you're i don't know what the math is exactly but you're gonna get a stupid amount of extra damage for your entire team thanks to one constellation that is insane next let's talk about her c2 this is going to make getting maximum fanfare even easier so your, any increase or decrease to HP during your fan fa or during the burst duration is going to increase by 250%. Basically, it's a lot of fanfare. <laughs> You're going to get a lot of fanfare as well as increase Farina's damage by 0.35% or sorry, her max HP by 0.35% up to 140% maximum HP increase. This is going to make your elemental skill do, again, a stupid, stupid amount of high damage. This is insane. Your buff now making everyone on your team insanely powerful. She's making herself even more powerful, even though she's already a powerful character at C0. This is, again, really, really stupid. And... C3 and C5, as we know, are going to increase skill and burst, which in her case, wow, more damage, more healing, and more ratio on those buffs of hers. That is, again, a really good upgrade for her. C4 is going to alleviate your energy recharge needs by restoring 4 energy every 5 seconds every time your uh, salon solitaire friends or your water buddies hit an opponent or your singer heals. Uh, you basically gain extra energy, so this is going to help with your energy recharge needs. C6 is, I'll be honest with you if, you, if you're looking on the left right now, yeah, it's pretty long. Let's condense that down for you. So C6 is going to basically make Farina a main DPS. This is her main DPS button. You might be familiar with this sort of constellation if you looked at Nahida's or Kazaha's uh, constellation. It's pretty much the same thing so instead of reading this all to you and going over it i'm just gonna give you a short summary so when you use your elemental skill you'll get what's called the center of attention for 10 seconds when you have this center of attention all of your normal attacks are converted into hydro and this cannot be overridden by any other means uh, your normal attacks will also do additional damage based off of Farina's max HP. Now, her charge attacks are going to have different effects while in this state as well, depending if you're Uja or Numia. If you're in Uja, she's actually going to heal your party of, by 4% of her max HP. If she's in Numia, she's actually going to do even more damage uh, in addition to what she's already getting from this constellation. Now, once you trigger any of these effects six times, the center of attention will end prematurely. Um, but by then, if you've done this effect six times, you've done a ton of damage in a short span. So this basically just makes Farina a main DPS for a short bit. And honestly, that's all you're going to need to basically kill anything in this game with ease. Now, let's talk team comms for Farina. Now you might be wondering, who should I use with Farina? 
And my answer is going to be almost anybody. Now, the one thing that I will say though that you should really pair up with Farina is a team-wide healer. What do I mean team-wide healer? Any healer that can heal everybody in your party simultaneously. Why? Because that's going to help you gain a lot of fanfare easily. And Chi Chi can do that uh, with her kit. It doesn't have to be Chi Chi. It could also be Jean with her burst. It could be Barbara with her burst. Kokomi with her burst and normal attacks. So you have tons and tons of options of who you want to use uh, with Farina as your team-wide healer. There's, there's a lot of healers in this game. Uh, I'm sure by now you've probably pulled at least one of them. So, I, like, honestly, any of them will do fine. You know, you can even use Noel uh, along with Farina, and they'll be able to play off each other's uh, healing and HP draining off, uh, like, really well and, and do a lot of damage together. So, up to you who you want to use. And once you've decided on a healer, honestly, the two slots on the right here, again, anybody. Why? Because I'm pretty sure anyone in this game will appreciate either a huge damage increase or a huge healing increase. So whoever you bring here, your DPS of choice. You can bring Yoimiya, you can bring Ganyu, you can bring uh, Diluc, uh, Klee, anybody, li like literally anybody is going to work fine with Farina. That's how strong she is as a buffer. Now there are only two team comps that I can think of where Farina might kind of like mess up the rotation a bit. And that is physical damage teams with Eula. So she might mess up your super conducts uh, because her water buddies will be constantly attacking what you attack. So, you know, chances are you might get a freeze or an electro charge instead of super conduct and that's going to mess up everything. Not saying it's impossible, just but just keep that in mind if you want to use Farida with Eula or Razor or even Jinyan or something like that. Now the second team that Farida will mess up if she's in is any sort of aggravate or spread team, unfortunately. Because with her, you're probably going to end up doing some Hyper Bloom stuff. Uh, but again, I don't, I'm not saying it's impossible, it's just that she's more likely to mess up some of the rotations and the reactions. So just keep that in mind when building a team around her. Other than that, though, you're free to do whatever you want with Farida. You want to do Vaporize, Freeze, Electro Charge, Bloom, hyper, well, hyper Bloom stuff. Like, you're good to go. Farida is there. She's going to help you out. The amount of teams that this girl can be used in is endless. Not to mention, she's future-proof as well. Uh, any character is going to welcome the damage increase, right? So her and Navia could possibly be a good team. Her and that gun girl that got announced could be a good team. I don't even know what they do yet, but I'm sure they're going to appreciate having Farina on the team. Have a lot of options when it comes to building a team for Farina. All right, I'm just using a team I just put together here just to showcase this boss fight. It's mainly just to show how Farina acts in battle or in how you use her. Um... Farina is very, very easy to play. You just want to use her elemental skill and burst if you have it. And then you swap off to whatever other characters are on your team and do their stuff. That's basically her kit. The only time you swap back to Farina is to reapply her uh, elemental skill after 20 seconds, since that's how long the cooldown is. So once the cooldown's uh, up, you can just... Again, you can keep her skill basically going forever and then... You'll be doing a lot of damage, and she'll be draining your team's HP, but that that's why you bring a healer. So, we're just going to fight this crab boss. There you go, simple press of the skill. Burst. And then you just do, well, whatever you want. <laughs> now you can just DPS it. You might notice after I use the fanfare that the crowd at the bottom of the screen gets bigger and then there was like a flash i don't know if you saw that i'll try to replay it somewhere but that flash was basically um us reaching maximum fanfare and just like that i wasn't even barely paying attention to that fight i know we got hit i can't even tell sometimes if it's from 
me playing silly or just Frida's constant drain. But, you know, for exploration purposes, this healing is fantastic. So you just use a charge attack and you see it swap over and then you can do this basically for forever. So if Frida's in your team for exploration purposes, you have basically an infinite healer. It's not the fastest healing in the world, but I mean, you're exploring, you're chilling, you're taking your time, it's fine. Like You don't have to cook ever, you don't have to go to the Statue of the Seven, just pop your skill and stand still. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Very, very easy character to use, and she's also very, very powerful. She just has a lot going on in her kit, which is why it took me forever to talk about it. Now, this video has been going on for long enough, so um, I'm going to go ahead and just wrap it up here and just say that Farida is one of the best characters in the game, as is tradition with most Archon characters. I know a lot of people were a little bit iffy because some of y'all look at leaks and were like, uh, her kit doesn't sound that good. Well... Guess what? It's amazing, and it's one of the strongest things in this game. And she will continue to be one of the strongest characters in this game for the foreseeable future. And I absolutely mean that. Like, when it comes to future Abyss Guides, uh, future, you know, like, combat events, like, oh, I can't beat this combat event, it's too hard. And I'm gonna be like, well, you should pull for Farina, because she makes it easy. <laughs> She is a gigantic power creep, not just for herself, but for anybody in this game because of her gigantic damage increase. Also, I forgot to mention this as well. She makes it possible for any character you want to use the, um, uh, the Hunter set. The Hunter set for Peace Effect gives you more crit rate every time you lose or gain HP. Well, with Farida, you're not going to have any trouble whatsoever losing HP uh, or gaining it thanks to her elemental skill so you're going to be able to proc that effect non-stop so you'll basically have all that crit rate for free characters that you could give that to are like Hu Tao, Yoimiya, Ganyu, uh, Tartaglia if you want to uh, there's there's a ton of characters uh, Liny, Liddy I think it is, Risley or Reesley all those characters I just mentioned you could give them the Mary Hunter set and Farina's gonna help you proc that effect all the time. It's really, really good synergy right there as well. Now, that really is gonna be it for this video, because again, too long, I'm sorry. But if you do have any questions about the character, or you feel like I missed something, I probably did, because I tried to get this guide out as fast as I could, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to try to answer you. Don't forget to leave a like and or subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. I hopefully I'm not as sick when you next time you see me for the next guide that I make. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.